Hi everyone, happy Sunday. So I am feeling a bit lazy today and am kind of combining my videos. I needed to announce my year-long color along, um, which I finally decided to move forward with. And that ties into my coloring chat. So um, we're just gonna do one whole video with chapters and then you can go to what you would like to see. So anyway um i have a few tags planned for the year i have one next month foxy february is gonna um, happen again people seem to really like that one um i'm thinking of doing one for marjorie sarnet in may so like a marjorie may and then um watercolor summer is gonna happen again and um what was the other one? Cattober. I kind of wanted to move the cats to another month because October so um, already has so many, you know, with seasonal and Halloween tags. But um, feline February was the only one I could come up with. And since the foxes have uh, have already claimed February, that is not going to happen. So um, three or four tags, hopefully this year, just monthly tags that will um, be on their own and separate but I did kind of want to do a year-long tag as well I know everybody's got one going but this one should be pretty easy to follow at least I think so I was inspired by Corey over at Colorfully Optimistic she is doing a um, alphabet coloring supply uh, tag where each month is a certain letter and you use a coloring supply that fits in that letter so I was kind of inspired by that. Um, and so the tag for the year is going to be, well, not just this year, but, you know, <laughs> next year too, because we only have 12 months. But uh, Coloring Alphabet 2022. And it's pretty straightforward. Basically, to try to get through some of my books that I have not colored um, and to help me pick them month to month I am going to just designate a letter each month so for January of course it will be A and um, that can either be the title of the book the artist of the book first or last name or subject matter so that's why I was trying I was saying this is hopefully going to be a fairly easy tag for people um, because you have a variety of ways to um, use the tag so um for example let's see <laughs> look at my massive piles of books here so this month will be alphabet color alphabet color is that what i decided yes alphabet color 2022 a will be the letter after that um and again title artist or subject matter that's in the picture so if you're going by artist, you could look at Fabiana Atanasio. Um, she also has an Alice in Wonderland book. So there is your uh, title, or if you color an Alice in Wonderland picture, that is your subject matter. There is also C.L. Aldridge, which I've been, um, I may do a separate tag for her. I've been kind of kicking around the idea. We will see how if I don't do Marjorie in May, I will probably do um, C.L. Aldridge for April. So uh, just keep an eye out. We will see this year has not started out um, well. <laughs> so I am I am trying to be flexible. Is Flexibility is like my word for the year. So um, there's Camelia Angelkova as well, which like I said, um, she is really popular with her miniatures books right now so that should um, that will probably be one a lot of people can go to or Elena Lazareva of course her first name um, any of the pictures in her books would work so just as an example and um, let's see then we have titles the color and chat you're going to see today is out of a million 
magical creatures. So any of the million series from Lulu Mayo will work because of course you have A in there and you also, uh, if they have animals in the title, that works too. So a million cute animals would work for this. Amazing Owls by Color Questopia. Adorable Animals by Jane Madey. This is a grayscale book. Do I have, I have one page I was working on in there. That would, oh, I'm going to wait and use that one. Um, Coloring with Haley is doing a, a frog February tag, and that will be the be the perfect picture to finish that month. So, um, Around the World by George Two Texas would work. Any of the pages in here, I do need to color another picture in there. I've only done the one. And then Anamorphia by Kirby Rosanna's. Would also be a good choice. Then we can do subject matter. See, I just wanted to make something that like doesn't doesn't require a lot of effort. And I'm mostly just giving examples. So because <laughs> I was locking, my brain was locking anyway on this. I was like, a a subject matter. And of course, everything that begins with a went straight out of my head. Um, I think a, e a huh, an easy one to use would be like maybe flowers or plants or like the scientific names of certain flowers and plants would be good choices um, for this. This is the Wicked Plants coloring book, which I really need to get back to. Um, this is actually by Amy Stewart, which would also work. And see if we do B next month, then I have Brioni there so I can continue. There's botanicals. So there's a couple in here I've actually already colored because they're in alphabetic order. Um, Asinite. Does this even tell you how to pronounce this? I am probably not pronouncing these correctly. Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. Fine. I don't know. Um, that one's, you know, an A as well, so there's an easy one there. Um, Flowerscape, you could go with, there were two I saw, and it was, I'm sure there's more than two, but, and of course I didn't, an Asiatic Lily was one I was thinking of, but I can't find anywhere. An Aster would be a good choice. There was also an Apricot. Blossom. That's it. Apricot Blossom. That would be a good choice. Apricots would be a good subject matter. Astronaut. I have been trying to get to this picture for months and I really want to color it this month. An astronaut cat would be fitting. Um, an axolotl. I think that's one right there. Apples. This is another picture I've been waiting forever to color that I would like to do this month. Is this beautiful kitty with the apples? This is out of the Cats 2008 Coloring Heaven collection. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can approach this tag and we will just be, my plan is to just do a new letter each month and we're, you know, like I said, starting off with A. You could do this tag where you color a book with A, you color a book with B, you color a book with C, and so on. That would be kind of a cool way to do this. Um, I consider my tags pretty open to interpretation. It's however you want to approach it that might work for you. Um, what I would ask is that um, if you do participate, just use the tag either on on various social media um it's hashtag alphabet color 2022 followed by the letter that you're using so if you're using a you would use a b c and so on so all of these for me if i'm coloring them for this month would have it be alphabet color 2022 a so hope that is clear probably clear as mud um and um, yeah, hopefully this will be a fun one. I know all kind, there's all kinds of um, tags coming out right now. And like I said, this should be one that's easy to tack on to a lot of the other ones that you might be coloring in. So 
anyway, we are going to shift over to my hopefully color and chat. I still haven't quite decided what I'm going to talk about. Is my picture, oh, my picture's still wet. Oh no, oh no. <sighs> Today has not been a good start to the year and I guess you guys can tune in to figure out why that is. And um, if not, I should have a short planner video tomorrow. Tuesday, I am going to look at the 10 books I was supposed to finish in 2021. And um not really sure where we're going after that yet. It really is going to depend on how my week goes. So, But if this is all you guys wanted to know, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate y'all as always. And I will see you next time. So let's shift over to the color and chat. Hi again, everyone. So... I was really scattered with this page. I don't know what what came over me, but normally I show you the book and everything. This is from A Million Magical Creatures, which is the most recent release by Lulu Mayo. This is the very first page in the book after you get past the um, title and copyright and illustrated by pages. So I am using the mostly the King Art gel sticks and um trying to remember i don't think i've ever used them on a page in one of her books before i use mostly those i do come in with some castle art uh, the pastel tint pencils then i use some of my delusions shimmer acrylic paint and finally some stickles oh and a little bit of um um It'll come to me in a minute. The dual metallic gel pens. So, And I just realized I missed something that I wanted to color in. Oh gosh. So maybe I do that while I'm talking to y'all. I don't know. Oh my word. Yeah, this, this picture. So this was um, to kick off my tag um, alphabet color 2022. And uh, to kick off the A start. So we are doing A million magical creatures. I had been wanting to color in this book for a while and I figured why not start with the very first page. Um, I actually had thought of trying to see if I could finish it in a year but I haven't started at all and for 60 plus pages, you're talking what, five a month. And uh, so that seems a little, little an too ambitious for me. So we are going to uh, not do that. I will try to remember to um, put the colors I used in the um, description. Yeah, I'm sorry guys. Normally I'm a lot more like on the ball and I've done a lot more prep work for my color and chats and if I like use certain colors and things like that. And the start of this year has just been a complete mess. So what I've done with here I am using let me let me grab my my swatch. So you guys you're like, it's not a big deal, Michelle. And my brain's like, let's focus in on this. Here I'm using a uh, the violet King R gel stick and the purple one. And um, then I'm trying to, my plan was to have it fade from really dark purple at the bottom to this really light violet at the top, obviously because there's the sun there. And um, it didn't go quite as I planned, but I just didn't want to go back over the background. I probably used a lot more water than I should have. I ended up scrubbing these on my Kieran Dash palette and then using the Arteza water brush to pull the color off and apply it that way. I did that for the background. Then for the rest of the elements I used the gel sticks for, I actually... Uh, rubbed them on the page, then activated it with water. 
Um, while this paper is a lot smoother and takes, I feel like takes water a little better than like Amazon printed paper, um, I really shouldn't have used so much water. I ended up getting, and I don't know if that's just like little bubbles formed where I don't know if it was the brush. I don't know if it was the fact I was using so much water. Um, but there are parts of the page, if you look really closely, even here, um, right above that comet to the top left, it looks almost like I treated it with uh, salt, which I've seen some people do as a textured type background. Um, but it's more like the pigment kind of speckled. Um, again, I think it's just the amount of water I used. I just used too much water. And um, after doing one layer, I was nervous to go back over it again because I didn't really want to damage the paper. Um, so we just rolled with this. And, and it's not the worst look. Um, like I said, if I had used salt with this, you probably would have had a similar type of texture. So it's, it's not necessarily bad. It's just not really what I was looking for. Um, again, I'm not going to blame the paper or the medium on this just yet because I feel like this is probably more of a user error type situation where I used a lot of water. So I guess my suggestion there would be in the future if you're going to use the King Art gel sticks um, and, you know, pull the pigment onto the paper like this, maybe don't use quite as much water. It might have been the type of brush. I know the Arteza brushes can put out quite a bit of water um, as you're using them. So um, that's one of the reasons, though, I wanted to use these on this paper. I hadn't tried it before. The um, Neocolor 2s did really well and watercolor pencils did really well. So I wanted to try some other water mediums. But uh, water-based mediums. And um, just like I said, uh, I probably just, in, in both those cases, I was very light with my water. And then in this case, I, I used a lot more of it than I usually do. So um, we won't rule out these just yet. But I, like I said, I'm going to chalk this more to user error. So anyway... So I hope every I hope everyone's start to the year was a little better than mine. I hope that your past few weeks, maybe if you've had break or vacation time over the holidays, I I just hope it went a little better than mine did. I have to go back to work tomorrow, and I I'm really not ready. <laughs> Though I, I still hold to the fact that, you know, while two weeks, while I feel like I got some rest and I'm more prepared for work tomorrow than I would have been not having the two weeks off, I do feel like I should have, I wish I could have had like a whole month off because maybe the second half of the month I would have actually been able to get into my element and do some of the things I wanted to do. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I am so scattered today, y'all. The biggest reason being, um, my mom had to go to the ER on New Year's Eve. Um, she had gotten up to use the restroom around four or five o'clock in the morning, had come back, sat on the bed, and then my dad said she just fell back onto him. She just passed out. And I, I can't even imagine what my dad was going through. But he had to call an ambulance to come get her. Um, they had to take her to the ER. It turns out her blood pressure had went low. Her blood pressure is low anyway. Um, and it all it takes is just a little drop to get her into pass out territory. And that's what happened. Um, but this time her blood count was down, which hasn't happened in like a year and a half. And, um, so she had to go. My dad couldn't, he wasn't able to message me till like 
Friday evening and um, they had been at the hospital all day. Um, and I mean, my mom being in having to go to the hospital is, is a bad enough situation, but you know, <laughs> oh, I've got to try to say this in, in as non, um, upset a way as possible, <laughs> um, non ranty way, but, um, the hospitals are full. They are over full. They are overflowing. Um, it might not be in every single hospital in, in this country, in the U.S., but I can tell you right now, there is not a bed to be had in Middle Tennessee or Kentucky, or hospital bed to be had in Middle Tennessee or Kentucky right now. Um, and from what I've read, that is becoming the case for a lot of southern states my they got there i mean my mom came in by ambulance five six o'clock in the morning and they fortunately had an er room to put her in um but it was just an er it wasn't even a real bed it was just the the exam table or whatever i guess that's normally in there um she had been in there all day um they did not have they wanted to admit her and they did not have an opening they called all the nashville hospitals this was my my local hospital that my mother will just i am not their care is not very good and the only reason my mom had to go there was because she had to go by ambulance and when you're in that situation you you can't really ask them you know <laughs> to skip and go on to Nashville, and it's not like she would have had any luck finding a, a room there either, but I mean, they called, they called everywhere. There was not a hospital bed opening to be found. They were also understaffed at the hospital my mom went to, um, so she got briefly seen Friday morning, and then really didn't see anybody else until Friday night, um, before anybody gets kerfluffled about it, I'm going to say I do not fault the nurses or the doctors, um, or any of the healthcare workers in this situation. They are, they are done. They are, it's part of what makes me so angry. Um, it didn't have to be like this. I was already sitting there seeing what was happening and I was like, you know, I, I was terrified. I was terrified that one of us was going to have to wind up going to the ER and, and being in this very situation and it happened and it just, in, in a lot of the hospitals that they called, um, they don't even have people, they don't even have rooms to put people in. They are putting them in hallways with beds and curtains. And, and I, I'm not going to argue with anybody on this. If you don't believe me, fine, whatever. But I am speaking from, you know, it is what it is. And I'm not going to argue with anybody. <laughs> I'm going to try really hard not to be... I am angry about it. I am very angry about it. Um, this is, is not just, I was angry about it before it involved me personally. And now it involves me personally. I'm even angrier about it. And it's just, it's ridiculous. It didn't have to be this way. And anyway, they actually were able to find my mom a actual hospital bed Friday night. Um, other than like the basic exam table she was using all day, they found her a legit hospital bed, but she was still in the ER room. They finally, finally were, were able to get her a room yesterday. I don't know how they did it. Um, I don't know. Hopefully it was just somebody being discharged and not, and not for other reasons. And it is, it is because of the spike in 
COVID right now. It is, that is the number one reason. And um, my mom had a test and she was negative, though my fear, of course, now is that she's there, especially if nurses are being asked to work while, if they're sick and they're being asked to come back to work while they're still sick, I am terrified she's going to wind up positive being there. And, and that, that is a huge fear for me right now. So, um, and there are a lot of things I want to say about that, but we're not going to say those today. We're just, we're just not going to do it. Um, so as you saw, I, you noticed I actually used the gel stick straight on the paper. Um, I was hoping that would help with using a little less water and maybe not have that weird little speckling type thing to happen. It still happened, um, though not as bad. But I was pretty messy with the sticks. Um, they are not pointed on the end like a crayon, so um, if you're not careful, you can do like what I did and end up putting it on the paper outside the lines. I I didn't stress too much about it, honestly, with this picture. I don't know. So many things went kind of not the way I wanted them to with this picture. So I didn't want to give up on it, but I also wasn't particularly loving the process <laughs> with this one because <laughs> it just seemed like everything I did to this picture was not coming out the way I wanted it to. And I was already in, in a mood anyway, as you, as you can hear. Um, so I was just frustrated with it and ready for it to be done <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> um, and a lot of that was just because I didn't have a lot of patience with this picture. So, um, and using watercolor type mediums on this paper, you, you have to have a little bit of patience, um, just because it is not watercolor level paper. And so, um... This is a whole do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. <laughs> but um, anyway, so yesterday I found out that um, they were testing her GI tract. They were running tests to see if a bleed was coming from her GI tract. Before she had the Watchman device put into her heart and got off her blood thinners um, for years, the blood thinners basically made her GI tract like paper thin and she was having constant GI bleeds and being in this exact same scenario and um, if she fortunately she was able to get that surgery right before they started nixing elective surgeries um, last year it was like March of 2020 and I truly believe if she hadn't had that done she wouldn't still be with us because it was it was so bad they had to go in surgically um she had one actually that weekend that she had the device put in and it was so bad they had to go in surgically to fix it and you know she had a small bleed a few months later in may and then for like a year and a half her blood counts have been great um her blood pressure still been low they they just do not want to take her off her blood pressure meds even though they're already low her blood pressure is already low and it is evident from this situation that it is so low that even this was a my this is evidently a minor bleed. They didn't even pick up any blood in the initial test. They had to send it off and they did find traces. So they are trying to get a colonoscopy scheduled with her um, gastro doctor to see if they can find the culprit. Um, it is probably a small ulcer somewhere in her GI tract and her blood count didn't change from Friday to Saturday. So, um, it has to be a slow one, but there is a serious issue when even a small bleed like that tanks her blood pressure so much that she passes out because like, it didn't take very much. She's already, her lower number, I can't remember what it's called, is already usually in the mid 60s. And when you get to the low 60s, high 50s, that is like pass out zone. So that was all it took, was just a little bleed to make her pass. What, it, and fortunately my dad was, had took the day off of work. What if 
my dad and my brother had both been at work and that happened. So this is, this is not a good situation. Um, I'm hoping they have a come to Jesus meeting with the doctors on this because they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to back off on her blood pressure meds. They're going to have to do something um, because, I mean, granted, this is the first time that's happened in a year and a half, and I don't really know why. I don't even think she's taking baby aspirin now. Like, they, but I guess just the years of the blood thinners wreaking havoc on her system have probably just made it super, super, you know, fragile, I guess, still, um, unfortunately. And see, there's a national blood shortage right now, too. So her blood count wasn't going up. And they, even with the shortage, they finally gave her a pint last night. And that was all they, they could afford to give her. And they wouldn't have done that if it hadn't already been as low as it was. Um, and... That's unfortunate, too. I actually normally go to donate blood on a pretty regular basis, but with all this happening, I haven't been able to go because, honestly, the people in this state, I do not trust that I will go to donate blood and they will be, they, I trust that they will, it will be a safe environment in terms of you know, the actual blood donation itself, but I do not trust the people around here to actively be careful enough not to be sick with COVID while they, they come to work or having to be in a room with other people for like an hour while I'm waiting for the blood donation to finish. I, I avoid all enclosed spaces like that. Um, Unless it was a very well ventilated area and there's none around here like that. Um, most of the little blood drives here happen in little blood mobiles or small little rooms or spaces. And I just, as dire as the situation is and as much as I want to help, I cannot put my own, I'm not going to put my own health at risk for that. But... There are a lot of other people that feel that way, and that is why we're in the situation we're in with blood shortage. So, um, anyway, she got that last night. I haven't heard an update yet today, um, but I assume they are not going to release her until they are able to get that colonoscopy done. And the way things are looking right now, there's no telling when that will be. Um, so that, that has been just, it's just not been, it's not been good. I, my mood wasn't the best anyway before that happened, but of course that kind of trumped everything else. And I have been in, in a very just down <laughs> kind of mood since since I heard that, um, I, and I can't imagine, you know, I mean, my parents being being worried about her getting getting sick, other than what she has right now, I'm sure they're frustrated because they're like, we thought we were past this, we thought we had finally gotten this kind of stuff taken care of, and um, just, and then trying to figure out, I guess, what's going to happen this next week, because my dad was supposed to go back to work tomorrow. Um, I'm supposed to go back to work tomorrow. And I, my goal was to not leave the house because of what's happening right now. To leave the house as little as possible. But I don't know now. Um, I don't know what kind of time my dad can take off. Whether he can work from home. Um, I'm hoping that's the case. I don't even like the fact that he's having to go into his uh, place of work, but the type of place it is, it's a distribution center. Um, he, he has to, I mean, it's though his job can be done from home and I'm kind of hoping they, they will 
let him do that during during this process so we have finished up the background the sun and the clouds the clouds i used the i think it was like the metallic pink so they'll they have kind of a nice little sheen to them the metallic one it, metallic ones are nice it's a very subtle sheen that they give um but it is really pretty so um the regular 48 stick set does have metallic purples metallic pinks copper a red orange blues and greens and then has like a silver and gold which i did use some of the gold on the sun here i think i'm using the pale yellow from the pastel king art set um i did pull just a few from the pastel set uh, mostly for the unicorns um and then I think all the other colors I pulled from the regular 48 sets. So. And as you can see, I was pretty darn messy <laughs> with, the, with the sticks. Like I said, I just, I should have went, if I had went a little slower, was a little more careful with this, it, it might have turned out a little more to my, to my liking. But it's just been the, those type, types of been that kind of kind of weekend um just trying to wait and see what's happening with my mom um so as far as the past few weeks um my health has really just been screwing with me during my time off I of course had grand plans and I should have known better um, for some reason, the the very Friday night, the very first night um, of my time off, my um, body decided that it wasn't going to sleep right for about a week and a half, and I went through just a real bad bout of insomnia for for about a week and a half, and I wasn't hardly using my CPAP. Um, because I was so uncomfortable and it wasn't the CPAP that was causing the problem it was just one of those things that it was like I couldn't use that either which probably wasn't helping me much but it was just every night it was like I kept waking up it didn't feel like I was actually fully sleeping I would move to the couch for a few hours and then back to the bed um, I was having a lot of pain issues I think one of my biggest problems has been the fact and I know there's like gaps here where I'm not doing anything on the screen I apologize for that again felt a little lazy and didn't really want to go back and make a lot of make a lot of edits but um I think part of the problem was um well, I thought it was because I had start had to start taking, um, I had to double my verapamil, which is the medication I'm taking for my heart rate. Um, when I went to see the cardiologist, oh boy, I hadn't even talked about that. Yeah, went to see the cardiologist second week of December. If you've been following me on Instagram or anywhere, I'm sure I've mentioned that. Um, he thinks I have something called, I think it's PVRs. Um, basically, the sensors in my heart are misfiring and my heart's trying to beat extra quick every now and then. And so it has to pause for a, you know, milliseconds to get back to a normal rhythm. And that is where the heart palpitations are coming from. Um, not really 100% sure why. Uh, there are tons of reasons those can happen. Um, I, to this day, still think and suspect that I had COVID last year and right after my mom got out of the hospital. I, I still feel like I had it. And at the time, um, by the time I went to get tested, it wasn't picking up. Because I started having these palpitations right after I was sick then. And it was a sick like I've never experienced before. Um, actually having trouble with my O2 dipping down. And unfortunately it was, it was not severe. Which 
probably was because I was already wearing masks and, and everything at that point. Um, but the palpitation started then and, you know, that's, I'd never had trouble with them before and they started right after that happened and, um, got a little better for a while and then just started getting really bad again in the last six months. But he doesn't think, he doesn't know why I have them, um, but he doesn't think they're serious. However, one thing that can cause them is issues with your heart. So he had me wear a, what's called a Holter monitor for a week. Um, I posted a picture of it on Instagram. I think I might have done it on the community tab here. They they basically glued this this monitor right above my heart, and um, I had to wear it for a week, and that thing drove me crazy. My skin was so irritated from it. I was so happy when it came off the following Friday. I had to mail it in, and um, the problem is my skin is got so irritated. It is still red where where it was glued down it is still red and it's been not quite a month but about three weeks <laughs> um no it's been it's been two weeks since I I had took it off and it's still red I don't know if it will ever go away <laughs> um but he wanted me to wear that just to make sure they didn't pick up anything else and um I also have to go get a calcium coronary score, which is a test where they, I guess, determine if there's buildup in your arteries and such and um, what percentage risk you are for um, a heart attack. I uh, That is mostly due to my family history. He wants to make sure because PVRs can be caused by heart issues and things like that. So he just wants to be thorough which I highly appreciate um, that he's not just dismissing it as due to anxiety or something and is not taking me seriously. So he, because of my history and stuff, he wants to be thorough and I really, really appreciate that. And that will give me peace of mind. Hopefully as those don't show anything else of concern, that will give me some peace of mind as well. Um, knowing that, you know, it's, it's nothing to do with my the actual structure of my heart or you know i'm at increased risk of a heart attack just due, due to family genetics because i think i mentioned to y'all that i had a cousin pass away in december that was a year younger than me on my dad's side um and um and her mother was also had to have like a double or triple bypass done just the month prior um, due to blockages. So it is something that runs on both sides of my family. So um, something definitely to make sure we're going to cross our fingers and hope. I go back February 10th, I think, um, and they're going. we're going to discuss the results. I was supposed to get that score done um, over Christmas break, and the one time I went to the town where I get the test done, I forgot my paper. So I have to go probably not this week, or unless I go to help out with my mom, um, it will probably be next week. So, um, but I thought... The insomnia was due. He doubled the verapamil um, to try to cut down on the palpitations, which worked very well um, for that. But I thought that was what was causing my insomnia issues. So I went back to what I was taking prior. Didn't help. Um, was taking Benadryl at night to try to help. Didn't help. It was like, it felt like I wasn't taking my Ambien at all. And I was. Um, it was that kind of not being able to sleep. And I think a lot of it was pain. And pain because of the weather. Um, not sure about other places in the U.S. I know it's not just Tennessee. But we have had crazy warm temperatures for most of December. Um, as uh, some of you saw, there were some tornadoes that come through Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, Bowling Green, Kentucky is like literally right up the road from me. I go there, um, go there often to shop and stuff when I um, don't want to go towards Nashville. 
it's like north of me instead of south and um they got hit pretty hard and had like i think at least a dozen pass away um and that's actually where i originally went to college years and years ago at western um so <laughs> we we've been seeing quite a bit of severe weather um yesterday wasn't too bad so yeah i mean all of december it's crazy weather and my fibro the one thing i can't control with my fibro is the weather and when we have extreme weather swings um barometric pressure swings uh just you know when it one day it's 40 and the next day it's 70 um my fibro just my my nerves short out like my body's just like no we can't handle this um i'm sorry we we are unsubscribing <laughs> from from any sort of regular functioning for a few days and that can cause so much pain um and issues with me and like i said unfortunately it's out of my control unless i move to a more uh temperate uh climate that's pretty much the only way i'm going to ever fix that so um you can see here where i started having problems because that orange wanted to bleed into the blue and i was getting mad and the more i wet the paper the more i was like i'm gonna tear a hole in this i've got to stop so as you can see from the gel sticks, um, applying them to the paper, I definitely don't recommend it for small areas. And I was doing it because I was lazy and being sloppy and just being messy and not caring. That's why I was doing it. I don't recommend doing that though. Using, taking it directly off the stick for some of those areas of purple that I patched in seem to work really well though so um again just I was just trying stuff I wasn't really in the mood I couldn't use alcohol markers on this because it's double sided um didn't really want to use just pencils um and so I was like I just kind of want to quick cute little picture and and it was a cu it's a cute little picture but it certainly wasn't quick <laughs> oh it did not go the way I wanted but that's okay it still turned out okay and I still like it so that is the important part you just sometimes you just got to keep at it even if it doesn't seem like it is working out quite the way you wanted it to and then you end up making mistakes and it it, it it's okay so, um, but anyway, the insomnia magically resolved itself after about a week and a half. I don't know what triggered it. I, all I know is that I was feeling pretty bad <laughs> by the time it finally decided to resolve itself. Um, Christmas went okay. We, um... We didn't do a whole lot of celebrating around here. Um, both me, my or me, my husband, and my family are very, 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 very cautious when it comes to um, meeting and being safe and things like that. Um, plus, I what was it that when I started having trouble sleeping? That weekend, I started having issues with my stomach. Like, I just, I was already having trouble with the gastroparesis and knew I had to come off Valerica. But it's like, it just went and got even worse that weekend. And that Monday, I had to go to the gynecologist for my yearly, which fortunately, thumbs up, all went fine. Everything seems to have checked out, though. I don't think I got a paper saying things checked out. But because of people being out of office, that's probably why. I may call them this week and just confirm nothing weird happened. But um, anyway, that all went fine. I had to go see him. Um, and then I went and hung out with my mom for a while because it was my first day of the week off. And I was going to get a grocery pickup because my plan was to not have to go in a grocery store for the next few weeks because... Um, uh, Omicron was already kind of becoming a thing and I, I saw the writing on the wall. I, 
I knew better. I knew what was going to happen. Um, and um, so I was preparing for it. But my stomach was really upset that day. And I, you know, didn't even feel like eating lunch, which is highly not unusual. But like normally when I have to go out and do uh errands I treat myself to like a Dairy Queen cone and cheeseburger because I may go out like once a week maybe I didn't feel like doing that and that is pretty significant for me if I don't feel well enough to go get myself a cheeseburger and cone I am I am not feeling great so I got home and starting that evening I really started feeling lousy like I started running a low-grade fever um, I started having a lot of sinus congestion and issues over the next two or three days which really upset me because had I known that had I known it was going to progress to that and it wasn't just my gastroparesis acting up I would have never went to see my mom on that Monday because it just I wouldn't have wanted to risk anything um, so I was out, I mean, I was laid out pretty much most of that week feeling sick anyway, um, just like a sinus infection or something. But at this point, who knows? I couldn't go get tested. Um, the local place that was testing, um, by the time I realized I should go get tested, it was Wednesday. And had I went to go get tested, I would not have gotten the results to the following Monday. Um, and, um, and nobody around here had tests. Like I would have had to drive 45 minutes and, and just hope that there were actually tests there, um, which was really not the case as most places were sold out of them. But we kind of waited for, see how the week went. And, um, you know, I left it up to my parents. We were supposed to go see them Christmas day. And I was, I was feeling better. I wasn't running a fever. Um, but I, I was like, you know, if y'all want me to just wear a mask, if, um, you know, I, I left it up to them and, um, which they were like, you know, go ahead and go ahead and come on. And, um, which I was really tired and down that day anyway, um, so far so good I mean it must I'm assuming it was just a sinus infection but I mean who really knows at this point right now I am coming in with some of the castle art pastel tint pencils I did get that 48 set in either November or December um, some of the colors matched up so I figured like for the hair for mostly the fairy and the unicorns, I wanted to come in with the pencils to just um, where the gel sticks left a little bit of um, white areas and it just wasn't really um, consistent. I wanted to come in and just deepen the color just a little bit. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. And like I said, it was mostly for the fairy and the... Uh, fairy and the unicorns so um because and and the little little dude that's sleeping on the other unicorn whatever he is a gnome I guess maybe um just to try to clean him up a little bit since everything got a little smeary looking <laughs> um but uh so we went to my parents on Christmas day um this was the first year my dad worked where he works, which is a distribution center for for a company a lot of people know about, but I'm not going to say. Um, but um, this was his first year having to work during Christmas and the the retail season, um, and it was it was pretty rough. Normally, my dad, me and my dad are very on the whole, hey, let's do lists for each other and this and that. And this year, like, I was so busy and my dad was so busy and so much was going on that we just wound up, we, we just wound up doing gift cards. <laughs> and uh, if I hated it, and I think it was part of the reason I felt down because I just felt like I should have been more on the ball. Christmas is a weird time for me. Um... When I worked in email marketing years ago, I also worked for a very well-known retail company. Again, not going to say the name. 
um, I was on their account doing uh, email account management and actually sending the emails and doing like reporting and analytics and stuff and let me tell you that period between October and December I got to the point I hated Christmas hated it because it was so I mean most Thanksgivings I was working because of the Black Friday emails because those could not be scheduled they had to go out and if there was problems with the website and stuff and then this is like 2010s uh, 2000s to 2010s so who knows what it's like these days but um you couldn't just schedule those so usually required being uh, putting on a pot of coffee and being up till two or three o'clock in the morning if there were problems with the site and we couldn't send the email yet and basically being on a call with the um people i worked with until we all got the official green light to send emails and it was just the holiday season was always extremely busy and just exhausting to me and I was always grinchy bah humbug about it um, by the time actual Christmas came around. <laughs> then when I moved away from uh, uh, consumer email and more business to business, um, it wasn't as bad. It was kind of the opposite where you don't send as much because of the holidays and most people being out. Um, it took a while for me to kind of get more in a Christmassy mood, but um, also <laughs> I'm not going to go in a huge amount of detail, but the, and I guess it was, it was 10 years ago, no, 11 years ago, I guess, um, I, I'd been married three times and my second marriage basically ended two days before Christmas. Um, I think it was in 2010. So, um, and it did not end in a good way. And that's about as much detail as we, it was not because of me. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, found out in, in a very in a pretty awful way two days before Christmas that year and that was also the year one of my cats passed away on Christmas Day um, like two days later she ended up having like leukemia uh, the actual leukemia cancer and um, yeah that was that was probably the roughest year of like Christmas holidays I've ever experienced in my life but probably to this day even 10 years later though I'm in a lot better place than I was at that time um I guess some of that still sticks with me too I just I don't know I get really down around the holidays I miss it makes me think a lot about the cats that have passed away and memories I have of them during Christmas and like none of the cats messed with the tree this year which most people are like that's great news <laughs> and I'm like not really because I put the tree up for me but I put it up for them too and and I kind of enjoy them getting into trouble with it and using it as a giant toy for a few months and knocking ornaments off and stuff it's just it's just fun those are great memories I have and none of them got in the tree this year they all a few of them would lay have been laying underneath it and that's it and so it's kind of sad to see them all getting older even though Le Leroy weirdly enough does not mess with the tree you think he would because he he's a troublemaker and he's young but I guess he realizes he's too big to be crawling in that tree so yeah that was kind of sad but just thinking about I guess just memories and and with the world basically being a dumpster fire right now just how you know holidays used to be <laughs> feel a lot more celebratory um missing okay uh before I continue there um here I actually come in for the different little rainbows and comets and stuff I use the delusion shimmer paint I used I think funky fuchsia fresh lime and polished jade and I end up making a big boo-boo here and I don't realize it till a few minutes in because of course I come through with the fuchsia on everything and then stick my arm in it while I'm sitting here painting on the other side of the page and 
end up smearing it all over the place and you can see it now you can see it happening even though I didn't see you see it happening and I didn't realize this till here in a few minutes and let me tell you that moment where you just almost want to hang it up and be done this was this was the moment for me um, but I stuck with it and I tried to clean it up as best I could and I think it still turned out okay but anyway um, just yeah missing like you remember what Christmas was like with your family as kids and stuff and I don't know my Christmas seems to be full of memories and and just sad that things aren't like that now I guess this year just not feeling like it's really Christmas I guess and just yeah anyway I was really bummed and um the bumming kind of stuck with me I'll be honest with y'all <laughs> I turned around finally started sleeping normally um actually the past oh gosh what was it Friday morning I woke up and guys that was based on my sleep score my what my sleep stages looked like and stuff like that's probably the best night's sleep I've had since I started tracking um back in June or July and so I was like hey I'm actually starting to get some good quality sleep and then Friday turns into yet another uh, dumpster fire on top of a dumpster fire and I should have known better. I should have known better than say anything. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, I was already down that day because, like, I would say past <laughs> probably the number one, number two woman in my life that I look up to as a role model passed away on Friday. I'm sure everybody knows. Um, where Betty White passed away and um yes it's a celebrity and I f still feel weird about being really depressed and down over the death of a celebrity but y'all like this woman has been such a part of my life like that that was how the through her my mom and me connected because you know I watched Golden Girls growing up with my mom and stuff and um my mom is obviously number one in my life of women I look up to strong women in my life and like Betty White was number two and I always said I want to be if anybody ever would compare me to Betty White I mean my mom it's the highest compliment ever but um I always love it when people are like oh yeah if they know my mom they're like that totally makes sense now you know I consider that the highest compliment but the next highest would be if anybody ever compared me to Betty White because that is who I who I want to be in my life like just I think she's fascinating I you know she is always she always did what was it somebody said on Twitter the other day she was the perfect example of the difference between being nice and being kind. And I thought that was a great way to put it. Like she, she was never cruel, but she did ha she had no qualms about speaking her mind and saying how she felt. Um, she, she did not, <laughs> she, she didn't have a filter many times, many times she didn't have a filter. And, um, I, I always thought, like, after I really got to know her and read her, I, I highly recommend her biographies that she's wrote. Now, I can't, I can't verify any of the others are good, but the ones that she has written, I can't remember which one it was I read. I've probably read them both, but um, I think it was the Betty White Here We Go Again that was published in 2010. I've read that. It's very good. Um, if You Ask Me was 2011. That one's good too. And then there's a Betty White in person that I need to go back and read. And that talks a lot about her, like, career and her life. And, like, I just, I think she's, she is such a role model. Like I said, she, even back years and years ago, she, you know, but trends and she was very 
adamant about what she wanted out of life and she wasn't going to let anybody just roll over her and you know I'm sure as a woman in the 20s 30s you know 20s through 50s that that was uh, difficult to do probably also difficult these days in a different way but like just I think somebody else said something like if if you live to be 99 and people think you still died too young then that is a great example of a life well lived and and I I thought that was also a very fitting fitting uh way to look at it like I just I wish it just she was such an animal advocate she was so funny so witty like I said, she's very, she was an advocate for a lot of, a lot of people in this world, and she just, she always spoke her mind, and, but she wasn't cruel about it, I guess, and she just, I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine living to that age, and like, nobody can really say anything, I mean, I'm sure there's people that will say bad things about her, because they didn't like that she, that she didn't have a filter and they didn't like that she cussed sometimes and that she was you know she she <laughs> she had a little bit of a dirty mind sometimes and but I love those things about her like that is just I I think that's great like she just age was truly a number for that woman and it, it was just a number and I I thought that was just so incredible and so yeah it just I, I don't know that that was that was the one thing that really set me off other than the fact that I saw hospitals are filling up and healthcare workers and teachers right now y'all just if any of you happen to be working in those fields or retail right now and you watch my channel just know guys I feel I feel so many feelings for you right now and I wish there was something I could do to help and the only thing I know to do to help is to stay home <laughs> and teachers I don't have any kids so <laughs> I'm doing my part for y'all <laughs> but y'all are all y'all are just getting the shit end of the stick right now and and it's not it's not right and it just eats me up so bad and I just can't even just oh. but anyway I was already feeling all the feelings anyway that day and then when dad come across with that I just I I said no and I went to bed <laughs> I I had to go just lay in the bed for a while and just veg and that's kind of been me this weekend is just I've been working on this um, picture and I did get it done and I like it and I I've been pushing myself even though I have felt very depressed and not wanting to do anything I've been trying to push myself um, but it, it has been very hard um, I did not get to hardly anything I wanted to talk about today I've just been rambling this is not the most uplifting start to the year color and chat that I'm sure some of y'all really needed. And I am so sorry for that. Um, I completely understand. <laughs> if, if Now, I've slept really well the last few nights, but it's like this is the last day. I'm supposed to go back to work tomorrow, and it's just, I am not ready. I needed two weeks of getting out of this the doldrums slump that I'm in and in a few more weeks of sleeping right to fix what the the week and a half I had that was so screwed up but that's okay maybe we'll do another color and chat next weekend who knows I I am gonna try to get the giveaways out this week I am I am so very sorry I should be on more on the ball on that and I'll just be honest, my my brain, my heart is just not in it right at the moment. My my heart is in a hospital <laughs> half an hour away from me right now, but I just I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I just 
yeah i i appreciate your patience with me on that they will happen i promise uh this month my is is really supposed to be about um trying to get back in the groove of things um i don't have a lot of appointments this month thank goodness everything's in february <laughs> um so um I don't know. I lost my train of thought. Hang on a sec. All right. So we are just about done here. You saw I had to go and, um, wow, that picture is blurry. Oh, that's disappointing. Um, I may, <laughs> if you're looking at this and you're not like, you're like, it's not blurry. That means I took the picture again and, and put it back in here. So that's okay. Um, yeah, you saw I had major malfunction there on the bottom right of the page where I had that paint kind of shift. Fortunately, uh, it's not super noticeable, but I was able to patch it up well enough. It's a cute picture. Um, again, I, <laughs> I, I got, it, it was, it was a labor and I'm glad it's done and I'm glad it's cute, but I, wouldn't say this is like definitely not <laughs> this is my first picture of 2022 and it is definitely not my favorite um it turned out pretty i just the experience was was uh not what i what i wanted however it was not the subject matter it was not the book it really was just me i think but yeah there's a lot of things i didn't get to i we didn't really talk about I didn't talk about too much other than just health and and what's really got me grumpy <laughs> lately. Oh gosh. Like I said, this is not the most uplifting color and chat that I was I was really hoping it would be for the start of the year, but it is what it is. And speaking of crazy weather, by the way, so we've been in the sixties and seventies most of the week. And I think part of the reason I started sleeping better was it at least settled. Like, it was warm. It's been warm since Christmas. It was warm, and I think my body was finally like, okay, well, we're consistently, the weather is consistently warm, and 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 climate change is, is a thing, and but at least it's consistent, so I'm not going to hurt so bad. Oh, that was the other big thing, too, guys. Another reason I had so much trouble over break. Last Monday, a week ago, I stopped taking my Lyrica. Um, because of the in, the increase in stomach problems the last few weeks, I've had more heartburn. It's been harder for me to eat or feel like eating at all. Um, a lot more nausea. Just a lot more issues in my stomach. I, I realized... This is the worst time possible that I could go off the med, especially with the weather being what it is, because the Lyrica helps basically deaden my nerve endings, so they're not as sensitive. And so the body aches and pains, the temperature, um, running hot temperature swings I have, um, all my fibro symptoms are lessened by the Lyrica. Like, it does help. Um, it, it can't get rid of it completely, but it does help, you know, in a significant way. And um, so this was like the worst possible time I could go off of it. But it just wasn't, my stomach was having so many issues. I just was like, I've got to come off of it. There, we've been slowly trying to work down to get me off of it. I upped my Naltrexone to, the low, to a low dose. It's still low dose, but it's 4.5 milligrams a day. I was like, we just got to, I just got to do it. So I went off it last Monday and I had had to go take Reef Cheap to the vet. And I'll talk about that more next weekend. Reef Cheap and Bagheera both had to go to the vet for checkups. Um, they're fine. Everybody's doing great. That is the one thing I did ask for that I got was that the cats would stay healthy. Now, I didn't stay healthy, but at least... The cats didn't have any issues, so I'm very grateful for that. And now that I've said that, I've probably jinxed myself. I need to knock on wood here. Um, 
But um, I had a massage on that Monday and I thought, well, this will work out great because I'm coming off at medicine. This will help me relax a little more. I don't know if it was the weather. I don't know if it was the massage and then coming off the med and a combination of all three. But Tuesday was so bad, y'all. I hurt so bad. I couldn't stay in one position for longer than an hour or two. I was just, I couldn't sit still. Um, it was just extreme pain, mostly in my legs. Um, and it was really miserable. Um, it, it started gradually getting better. I also ended up having a massive headache for a few days. Um, started gradually getting better. About the time I, it started getting a little better, like that Thursday or Friday, yeah, like, I think that Wednesday night is when I finally started sleeping better, um, and I was trying some different things, like, just standing up in the evenings, like, just, if we're watching TV, just standing there instead of sitting on the couch, just to mix up the, the muscles and what I'm using for a couple hours, because, sitting in any position for too long was just causing a lot of pain and I was doing that to kind of mix things up and that worked out pretty well actually I, st I think I started sleeping better the night after I started doing that and um and I would stand up for about an hour a each evening um in including getting up during the day of course but um and then working in my office some in the morning, so I'm not on the couch all day. My, f It seems like I have pain when I do too much, and also when I do too little and I stay in one position too much. Um, so it's a constant battle. Uh, but yeah, I've been off of it for a week. Um, I said I wanted to get off some medicine for 2021, and that's, that's what I did. I had to get on some other medicine. But in the grand scheme of things, um, the Lyrica was a big thing to get off of. Um, it, it, I felt down, but like physically, I'm not too bad, um, surprisingly. And the Naltrexone's probably had a lot to do with that, and I'm grateful. But speaking of the weather, as I said, we had a bunch of storms blow through yesterday. It had been 60s and 70s all week. Today, it is down now to... Excuse me, Rupachip, what weather, what's our weather now? 36. It is 36 as of 2 o'clock on Sunday. And we are going from thunderstorm watches and severe thunderstorm, or tornado watches and severe thunderstorm warnings yesterday to a winter weather advisory tonight. Now, granted, it's supposed to be less than an inch of snow, but you can imagine my I, my aches and pains have been a lot more ached and pain today um i am a little nervous how it's going to be tomorrow but we will see anyway i didn't i did not get to hardly anything i really was going to talk about this was just more of a not a vent per se but just kind of a i'm grumpy so we're just gonna be grumpy kind of video. Not really grumpy. I don't know how to put it. Reap Sheep just came up here. So if you're wondering if I sound distracted. Um, I may try to do another coloring chat next weekend. Um, there's so much happening right now anyway that usually two weeks is a good is a good period for me because not a lot happens in a week but a fair amount happens in two weeks. And then this time like a whole bunch of mess happened even though I wasn't working, um, a whole bunch happened, so, with, with my mom being sick, and with my mom in, in the hospital, and going back to work, and everything else going on this week, I may just do another one next weekend, so, um, hopefully, hopefully I will, things will be a little better then. I'm just, I'm just worried. I'm worried about my mom. I'm worried about me. I'm worried about humanity right now. <laughs> I'm just worried about a whole heck and lot of things right now. And, um, and it's just, I don't know. I think we're all, we're all tired. We're all just exhausted. And, um, 
it just we keep it seems like we just keep getting kicked when we're down and anyway all right enough of that i'm going to stop this here so i can get this rendered and loaded before i change my mind and be like this is awful nobody wants to listen to this <sighs> if you don't i understand but hopefully you liked seeing me use some different stuff for the for the um for the page my goodness and uh again this is for the color along we're just kicking it off and yeah glad i actually used some of my some of my supplies that i have that i don't typically use all the time so i'm supposed to do a planner video tomorrow but we're just gonna wait and see we're gonna wait and see actually how the week goes i plan tomorrow and tuesday but um it may get stretched a little more over the week depending on how things go so hope you are all doing well um and i'll talk to you soon bye for now